very much for giving us some seconds for an interview and uh, welcome in Switzerland. Perhaps of all, uh, UNIDA um, had the last record in 2004, but you you are still um, continuing now since 2012 to doing going on tour like a real rock and roll band. Um, how was, uh, after such a long period of time, the uh, feeling being back on stage? It's great, man. It's the best thing in the world, you know? Um, it's good to get back with John and Mike and, and play these songs again and have Curtis Whoop Whoop here joining in and, and fitting in perfectly. And it's just, it's just a pleasure to, you know, bring the music back to the people. And those are the, the thanks to the fans that, you know, enjoy it and stay with it and haven't, you know, stopped supporting. You know, they stay into it and come to the shows and buying the records and all that stuff. So it's, it's been good. It's been cool. It's been great, Gemini, with John, Arthur. And, you know, it's something but the best. You know, I love it. Uh, bringing in Kurt, he's doing a great job for us, you know, keeping it just right, you know, right in the pocket. It's, he's doing a phenomenal job. It's been the best. Uh, yeah, it's great for me. I'm glad they called me. It's good hanging out with them. Glad to be on tour or not out. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I think Arthur and, 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 and Mike put it put it right that to you know to share the stage with, with Mike and Arthur and Kurt, it's it's a privilege and it's an honor. And I think we all we I think we pretty much feel that way about about each other. And it, it, this is not something we do all the time. And um, so it is a little bit of a monumental moment because it's a very, it's a very short jaunt. Well, it's only a 10-day tour that we're doing, and these are far few in between. So we really enjoy when we can do this. So it's 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 good. Um, <clears throat> please let me say for all the uh, fans of Switzerland that it's a really great honor that you visit us here in Switzerland, especially even if you have only 10 days touring so it's a great honor but uh, the Swiss people like very much your music and so it's a really great honor okay um, is it generally li like this that you all prefer to do live music than to uh, produce a record That's question. Uh, I love it all man and I'm sure everybody here does the same. I mean, it's, it's just a different process. I love recording. I have a recording studio back home, and I love that process too. You know, I do the engineering and this and that, and but getting out here and playing live and feeling the energy from the people and the energy on the stage between us, there's nothing better than that. I enjoy both, but definitely you feel <clears throat> after you've gone through that recording process and the hard work, you're like, yeah, it's done. But getting out here and you know, plugging into your amp and, you know, and, and, and the energy and that just tops it off, you know, that's the icing on the cake, however you want to put it. Can't beat it. Okay. More statements? Do you prefer to... Mike, do you prefer recording or playing live? Yeah. Uh, playing live yeah. totally is the best, of course. Recording, uh, I'm still getting it, you know what I mean? I got this great engineer, producer guy here, Martha C., who, who never settles for like, that doesn't sound good enough, you know what I mean? He's always pulling out the best out of you, but, but definitely playing live is, is, is a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, playing live is where it's at. That's the whole point, isn't it? Do you like recording, Kurt? I don't know. It's not loud enough. Yeah, it's loud enough. Yeah, you know, recording's, recording's always, always a, a funny, you know, a funny thing versus you know, versus you know, being on stage and, and actually performing. Um, Arthur's right. There's two totally different energies, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, you know, being in the, re the recording studio, there's some really cool parts of that too. Actually, creating the music and making the music—that's the fun part. Creating and recording, and that what, what goes on to tape or digitally, whatever, and that it's. It's final to get to that point. That's fun. That's that's a great part. And then the flip side of the coin is to be actually to, to, to perform live and go on the road, and 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 to to try those songs out live in, in different environments and in different venues. 
that's where I think a band like this really shines. This is life. How, how is the feeling personally if you first perform for uh, before audience a new song? I imagine you you have produced something, a creative work you created in the studio, but. What is in the consciousness of a of a musician when you do the first time before audience a song live? Is it is it really special? Don't don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely special because you know it was just when you do something new you've never done and that first time you do it there's that we're like oh shit <laughs> I hope we don't fuck this up and you know it's something new and and it, it's it's I mean we love playing the old songs too but like. When you have something new, you have that uh, fresh aspect where, like, you know, it just adds another intensity to the show, you know, where you, you get that thrill, you know, it, more adrenaline, like, all right, let's do that new one. Oh, shit, fuck yeah, all right, ah, cool, that was awesome. Mike! Mike. Right. Kidding, kidding. <laughs> okay. Agreed. Okay. okay. Um, but nowadays, it's a long time that you did the last record, and um, so... Let me ask, please. It's a, a fan question. Uh, will be there a new record at any time? Is there any possibility to get some information about that? And you know, at some oh, point, oh, question at, at, <laughs> at, at some point, we've talked about that, we've discussed about that. We're you know, we're all busy. We're doing this tour. It's awesome. John's doing a solo record, which is amazing. Me and Mike have our other man house of worker promises. We're doing a new record. So it's you know, we're, we're all busy, but definitely at some point. We'll do some more stuff for sure. Okay. You know, we just want we want to keep working. This is our job. You know what I mean? We, we want to work and we want to make music and we want to bring it to the people. And you know, it's just I call it adult scheduling. You know what I mean? We all have the Curtis Scott. He's a badass. He's in like 20 bands or something. You know what I mean? So we all have a lot of things going on. We're all grown men, and it's just finding you know the time frames. Cool. All right, you're done with this. We'll be done about that time. Let's do that. Boom. Okay, let's do it. You know, like like this tour. We planned it out. All right. You know, he was doing Vistachino. We're doing our thing. Da 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 da. Let's. Yeah. We got some time. Let's put this in here, and then it help. It helps everything. It helps everybody. So we. These guys are extremely busy, and uh, I'm. I've got a pretty packed schedule ourselves. But when when we started talking about this, this took a year to to do. This. What we're doing right now took a year for planning to do. So we are that far ahead of our schedules. But, you know, I, I think that there's no question that we all enjoy being in the room together. We all enjoy what, what we create together. And um, I think as long as we're on this earth, I think at some point in time, there's going to be something that this band does uh, in the near future or not so near future. Um, sometimes we have to park her in the garage for a while, you know, and and she'll she'll stay in the garage until we gas her back up again and we'll take her out for a spin. And, and uh, that's exactly what we're doing right now. And it feels good. It feels good to, to, to open her up again. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> if we go uh, back into the history of the development, how you created the songs for Unita. Is there perhaps any story of uh, the most funny way or the most crazy way that one song was created? Is there any story you want perhaps to tell? A secret? <laughs> you know, a lot of it, we're playing a lot of, you know, old stuff, stuff off Bessa Wayne Grove, stuff off Coping, and A lot of it, you know, say like White Pussycat. People like White Pussycat. That was just like, I picked up the guitar, started jamming that riff, everybody chimed in, and we kind of went for it. And even recording it, we just kind of went for it in the studio. It wasn't really like we rehearsed it a whole bunch or anything. It just was very, a lot of the stuff that we do is very organic. You know what I mean? We all have a riff, and then it's all of us in a room, and we'll, and we'll hash it out. Funny story? I don't know. How about no, here? No, here. General and special How about yeah. last day? We're tracking that. We did that in like a week. That whole record coping. These guys were still working, so we would track till like four in the morning. They had to go to work at seven in the morning. Work all day long. Work all day long, and then show up back into the studio. I took vacation. I'm like, I don't fucking enjoy this shit. Yeah, right. They would come in. So we're doing last day, and Mike's like seriously like. <laughs> Falling asleep while he's playing it, because you know we just—that's what 
that's what happens. We we're all late. We all had tired, jobs, you know. <laughs> we all still have jobs. We, we work, and then we go do what we do, and we, you know, we're not fucking around. They would work, come in, shoot each other in the ass with B12, <laughs> and then, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the red right. you know. So it's just, that's right. it was fun in all aspects. Is there any crazy stories? I don't know. That's crazy. Enough. If you if you show up tonight, I might fall asleep playing. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Now he's freaking. <laughs> I forgot about that though. That was funny because we used to we used to give ourselves vitamin. And I mean, we that's the we're not straight edge by any by by any means. But I mean, instead of doing a bunch of blow and cocaine, we decided to take the organic right and do the the, the vitamin injections in the ass type of deal, and it worked. But, totally. You know the the you know that was that's a funny story because I, I totally forgot about that. But for me, I think a, a good special time of of, of writing and creating. A lot of it, um, a lot of it, it was just Arthur, Mike, and myself mm -hmm. sitting in a room, yeah. and, we, and it was we were doing, we were doing what the what I'm just gonna say before the just the two piece thing kind of blew up, the white stripes and yeah. keys, and we were doing that with the three piece, to ten years before. We rehearsed. Anybody that's, thought that's the way yeah. we rehearsed. Was we just rehearsed us for like three. probably a year when yeah. we first started jamming out. Yeah. It was just the three of us, no bass. I would just crank the living shit out of the guitar. Yeah. And We'd have we, a separate speaker for the low bass sound yeah. from the guitar. Yeah. And we we did that yeah. probably for like a year straight, just writing, yeah. finding our feet, and hanging out, and drinking lots of beer and Jack. You know, yeah. I'd get off of work. All right, I'm off for this time. And uh, all right, you got booze? Yeah, I got a Jack and beer. And we'd go and hang out and. And have fun. But can we say the the it's really creative to sit together and suddenly if you are the right person at the right place, suddenly good songs can uh, yeah. happen. And, uh, yeah. One began, the other had the uh, more idea. And uh, that's how that's that, that's how pretty much everything is. We were all in a room, you know. I'll have a riff or something, but we'll, you know, Michael do his thing, John will do his thing, yeah. and that's how it. Uh, that's how it happens. You are all very young guys. Which musician did influence you, if it's allowed to... Uh, That's not allowed. Of course it's not. <laughs> I got too many influences. I don't have any, like, one person. Yeah. I, I, I'll, listen, music, music I'll listen to Michael Jackson, the Iron Maiden, the Elton John. James the, Brown. To James Brown, to... Metallica, whatever. You know, Texas. I'm all over the place. I'm on a big R&B trip, like old Motown. That's all I've been listening to a lot of. But all the Muscle Shoals stuff since we've been watching that documentary. Muscle Shoals, dude. Watch that documentary. Holy, have you seen that? The Undertaker. Dude, watch that. The Undertaker wrestling. No, I never got into wrestling. <laughs> the Undertaker. We like the Hulk, brother. Come with me to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is the most difficult song for you to play live or to sing live? <laughs> is there any? Hit? According to John, yeah, all of them. It's, <laughs> it's hard being so badass. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be King or, or Shaherless, one of the ones. King, yeah, yeah. Shaherless for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's the reason why we don't do that ever or often, but we will. And in a technical way for you to play on the instruments? Um, hmm. Or are they all uh, at the same level to play? And, uh, uh, it all varies, man. It all varies. And it all varies on the night, too. You know what I mean? It varies on the stage. It varies on the monitors. It varies on your amp. It varies on how hot it is in the room. We played London, and it was so hot as fuck in there, and it was amazing. Just dripping. And for me, I love that. Some you of know? the speakers and amps were like, just couldn't handle it. Okay. Okay. You know? And um, <clears throat> perhaps, John, if you, if I may ask you, if you're preparing for a live session, like a concert, like now, um, there are some fans who think uh, generally in rock and roll, as it's our rock and roll guys drinking beer, making party, and also, on, is it important to have a little bit preparation before every uh, concert for a good live show? Yeah, it's, for me, it's. And I think for the majority of us, I, I, you know, if not all of us, I think it's it's all about routine. Uh -huh. You know, I go through the steps of making sure everything's in place, and you have your you have your thing. But it's you know, we don't 
we're not we're not backstage, you know, smoking crack and shooting heroin and getting ready to getting ready to play and do, you know, we it's we have a responsibility and we want to do well. The most important thing is that we we want to we we'd like being on stage performing, whether it be in front of five people or fifty people or five hundred. We're going to be doing it anyway, but so we want to we want to get our you know we want to get our heads right and and there's a there's a process. To, 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 to that and and uh, but it's not it's not I, I don't think it's what one would think um, it is I think it just it's just very natural after all these years you 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 want to um, you know you have a routine and you go through that routine and, and if that routine is broken sometimes it, it affects me mm -hmm. personally um, like at Hellfest it affected me a little bit that there were certain things that I that were just not in place, and um, but for the most part, it's just I think it's just a very basic routine. Yeah, you got to do your warm ups. You know, I'll I take time to warm up. I take time to stretch. You know, I'm not a spring chicken, so it's like and it just yeah, you want to perform well and you want to be able to do the best that you can for the crowd and the fans and for yourself and. For my own mental capabilities, so I'm not like, Ugh, you know, I'll sit and I'll warm up, you know, I'll stretch and, warm and uh, yeah, 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 I'll get my guitar and I'll take time and like, all right, let me, you know, get my get my groove going. So when I go out there, I'm ready to go and play everything right. Cause yeah, some things are they're hard to play and some you know, some are easy, you know, and you gotta gotta make it happen. Please let me ask one more question uh, concerning a difference uh, the U.S. and uh, Europe. Is there from the music night and day? No, 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 no. From from the <laughs> from the musical scene, uh, is there at the moment a stone rock time in the U.S. or is there no rock at all? Or can't you say anything about? Or do do you like to come to Europe to play here because you have true fans here? Or uh, is it if difficult situation today as a musician generally because of all of Spotify sure. and record situation and so on and definitely I mean the US <laughs> and Europe is not in day difference okay. you know uh, I mean I love the US of course but it's it's the US is very fast food for the brain you know so like What's popular now? Oh, we'll like that. Oh, wait, this is popular now. Oh, wait, this is popular now. And over here, it's not like that. Like, people, if they're into you, they stay into you. And they support you. And so when we come, you know, people are digging. And they come to the shows. And in the U.S., it's like, oh, what's cool now? Well, that's cool. Well, that's not cool anymore. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's very, you know, technology. And you instantly download. Nah. And, and it's not that. It's, it's not as prevalent as over here, you know. People are... are they stay into you and they, they support you and you know where we can do where we can come here and do these shows you know and sustain ourselves and hopefully at the end of it make it a dollar I, you know? I, I totally agree with that and I often wondered that you know why why a band like you need is so well received over here versus in the United States and and Arthur has a very interesting perspective on that and a, a one that I agree upon and I uh, I often thought about why is that but he's right I think it's fast food for the brain kids are into what it. it's like what's the flavor of the month and over here I think there's a there's a there's a, a I don't know if a loyalty is is it, but if you're into it, you're into it. Just like I've been into the the, the cult ever since I was 15 years old. I'm in, still into the cult, and uh, but the, the 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 reception and how well we are received over here versus the United States is night and day. That's for certain, and and we appreciate that. That's why one of the reasons why we come over here is is because uh, you know um, it, it's 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 great to um, Obviously, be in a, in a wonderful country like Switzerland, and, and you know, in Europe as a, in, in general, anywhere from, you know, Scandinavia down to, to Spain, Greece, and the UK, whatever. It's 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 awesome to be here, and awesome to play, and and um, great to um, great to uh, you know have people actually you know actually come to our shows. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So it's yeah. and really honestly, care, yeah. Huh? Not because oh they're cool right now. Let's go check that out. It's the best. Uh -huh.
allow me one last question because you have later to perform and to relax um, do you do you think today the business for you would you have been more musician and less uh, giving interviews or doing emails doing business affairs doing planning a tour or is, is the the divide between working as businessman and work could be in working time for a musician less or more than 10, 15 years before. Do you understand my question? Yes, now? definitely. We, we, you definitely have to do the business. Okay. It's the day and age where if you know what you're doing, you can do it yourselves. Yeah. Like this, you know, this whole tour list, you know, me and John, we're doing business. You know, we have a great tour manager that would help us out and a great booking agent. But, you know, we're doing it all ourselves, and it's a lot of work, yeah. you know. And But you can do that these days, and luckily enough, we have a fan base where we can come over here and make it happen, you know. So you definitely have to pay attention to business. If there's anybody I tell the kids or whatever, people kind of like, pay attention to business. It's the music business. Mm. It's not just music. It's the music business. And if you don't pay attention to that, you're going to get fucked, and you're... It's there's no ways ends it for butts, you know. So you got to juggle. Like I mean, there's times where I'm like, man, I'm sick of doing. I just want to play my guitar. Fuck. But yeah, I'm, it's 2 a.m. I'm gonna do emails till 8 a.m. and then go to bed. So okay. Okay. you gotta you gotta balance both. But that's fine. I like doing biz. You know, at least we know we get it done right. You know, we know we're doing it and and it's getting done the correct way. This way. Yeah, instead That's of right. somebody else just doing shit, and then later on you're like, what? You know, we are on top of everything, and it's good. It's a good feeling. Some more opinions? Some more opinions? You guys like business, man? Like doing business, man? It's, you know, you always get to hear, why don't you get to the computer a little more often, Mike? You know, Arthur's kicking ass lately <laughs> on, on some business <laughs> stuff. You know, the guy, he's quite the business. Great, so thanks. Is, so is I'm John, you know? Asshole. You know what I mean? It's like, they, handle, they do a great job handling all the business, you know what I mean? It's awesome. Um, and this, they took care of all the stuff. I've just, um, Kirk, my other, my other just thinks to hang out and have a good time. Yeah, that's it. I'm just a party guy. He gets to whoop whoop all the way. <laughs> yeah. No, my other bands, I, I take care of a lot of the stuff, and it is business, and you want to take care of it yourself so you don't get screwed by everybody. You don't want to just hand it over and not pay attention to it because other people take advantage of you. And They'll you take your money. Take everything, everything you're barely making anyway. It's the classic music business bullshit, so. Awesome. Agreed. John, I hope after the interview you have you know you have no problems with the uh, with this one because mm. you did so much. <laughs> yeah. Because my question was so. <laughs> okay, please allow me the really last uh, question. Do you know any? No, it's the really last. I promise. Do you know any word in German? Yeah, Scheiße. Hey, uh, Mutafrika is one yeah. I remember. Yeah. It's all bad stuff. I mean, uh, one more? Yeah, I mean, there's. What do you got? There's Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, Danke. Uh,